Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today I'm joined by Coburn from Netflix. G'day Coburn. Hey, hello. Thanks for joining me today. Now, you guys do some pretty cool stuff. You know, I love sitting at home with the family watching Netflix all the time. Awesome. Uh, you're known for resilience, you're known for globalness. Now, I'm wearing the Chaos Monkey t-shirt here. I like it. What do you guys do when the monkeys get loose? Talk to us about some cool stuff you've been doing. That's right, yeah. When we have the big monkey unleashed, which means we have to evacuate a region, we have a relatively complex failover model, but it's based on a bunch of principles in the architecture where we try to simplify various dimensions, whether it's scaling or DNS, and that's what I was gonna to talk to you about today. Let's dive right in, got something cool here. Yeah, so when we think about you know the tens of millions of devices active at a given time, and they're trying to talk in a Netflix, we simplify the model with very high-level DNS records, right? And then we apply geo-routing that lets these individuals route to regions that are latency or for other reasons ideal for them, right? What we've done is we've leveraged Route 53, but at this level we have what we call virtual records. So you have our top level DNS record going down to what we call a virtual record. Mm -hmm. And this is where we steer traffic to in a geo manner. Below that we have the actual origin records where people are gonna talk to in the end and those origin records are bound to ELBs. And we have maybe 50 distinct ELBs and those farms themselves might be many hundreds of instances. In the process of doing failover, we have to differentially steer people around to avoid overloading the target region before it's scaled up. So you're not just banging a whole region's workload on another one, basically cascading the failure. It would just yeah. And we have to actually route some traffic from in different ways. Yeah. So Virginia, part of it goes to Oregon, part of it goes to Dublin, cool. right? So what we've used is within Route 53, one thing that's very important to us is the ability to quickly change these records mm -hmm. for possibly hundreds of endpoints for devices. One of the benefits of Route 53 for us is we decouple the virtual from the origin. And the capability of Route 53 that's of greatest value to us is the support of many different types of alias records within your zone, right? So when we fail over the region in a steady state, you have traffic coming here in your normal pattern and routing down to their origin and then routing down to the ELBs below that in some distributed way, yeah. right? And when it's time to fail over, our flow architecture actually starts to rebalance capacity and then at some point it actually goes in, repoints this record within Route 53 over to here. So most of our viewers will be going, aha, but what about TTL? That's right. So one of the big benefits of Route 53 is that broad support of alias records, right? So alias records have two primary benefits for us. One is it lets us chain many sort of names together and it avoids recursive queries. Without that, with many DNS providers, you're required to fall back on C names. C names put a lot more work on the DNS infrastructure and as well, they have TTLs for every level. As you can imagine, we have many tens of thousands of devices that all treat TTL differently. So by being able to apply alias records, we have high level TTLs somewhere up the stack which are honored quite well, yeah. but below the level we don't have to worry about that. So you can change all that behavior. Exactly. In a matter of minutes we flip over to another region, um, and then when it's time to fail back, we don't have to maintain the state. Our architecture will actually go in and interrogate where the pointer is. So even if something goes wrong and we have to take longer, something might be changing in the rest of the state of the system, we just say, oh, it turns out the state we're in right now is we're sending traffic from US West 2 to US East 1, and we just do a repointer programmatically. So it's kind of a real-time state because you can handle whatever situation you're in. You don't have to kind of get it all nicely organized again. That's right. And when we run in our failover model, we have services running in each region, and the regions we're evacuating to are working in coordination and managing these independently, saying, I'm now ready, bring that traffic to me. So it's a pool model of traffic. That's right. It's understanding how to flip it programmatically all from within the same service. Sensational. So we're talking intelligent traffic steering. We're talking about understanding the failure conditioning that's taking place and maintaining a streaming experience to me sitting at home in Melbourne. That's right, absolutely. I like it, Coburn Sensational Solution, thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem, great. Thank you for watching, this is my architecture.